Let's correct the lie. Dr. Twagira Yezu Emmanuel was not a genocide fugitive. After his untimely death, the CNLG, Rwandan National Commission for the Fight Against Genocide, launched several lies and half-truths about Dr. Twagira Yesu Emmanuel into the mass media. Without dwelling on a few inaccuracies, such as the date of his death, I would rather correct a few big lies mentioned in this article. 1. Historical Background He is not a genocider. After their seizure of power in Kigali in 1994, the RPF soldiers, composed mainly of Tutsis, continued to massacre the Hutus, preferably Hutu intellectuals capable of ideological resistance or the more or less wealthy Hutus so that they could seize their properties. The genocide of the Tutsi was over. The opportunity was ideal to accuse of genocide any Hutu they wanted to get rid of. For those who could not be physically eliminated, they had a plan B. Expeditious justice provided by the political military. Several syndicates of informers with false testimonies were created by the same authorities. Criminals as well as innocent people were thrown in jail together. It was in this context that Dr. Twagira Yezu Emmanuel, then a professor at the University of Rwanda, was thrown in prison in 1998. After a trial that lasted two years, during which time he remained in prison, the false accusations failed to overcome his innocence. He won the case and got out of prison. He returned to the university where he continued to teach for eight years. 2. He is not a wanted fugitive. In 2008, he found work outside the country with an international NGO. He left the country under legal conditions. He did not flee the country. His last country of stay in West Africa was Ghana. He was part of the Rwandan diaspora regularly participated in their meetings. He was in regular contact with the embassy and just last year obtained the renewal of his Rwandan passport by authorities in Kigali. In his private conversations, he even planned to return to Rwanda soon, not to work in a hospital, but to open a small orthopedic clinic. All this is in contradiction with the declaration of wanted fugitive. 3. Justice in Rwanda like the sword of Damocles. As already mentioned, after his two-year trial, Dr. Twagira Yezu Emmanuel won the case and the court declared him innocent. But the prosecutor appealed as Dr. Emmanuel wanted to clear his name of any suspicions. He immediately asked that the appeal proceeds as soon as possible, but the judicial authority stalled. He persisted, writing regularly to the authorities concerned but until his death, some 20 years later, the appeal trial has not still taken place. It was as if the Rwandan authorities wanted to keep this suspicion over his head like the sword of Damocles. On the other hand, in 2010, so 10 years after his trial, realizing that Dr. Imano was not in the country, these famous local jurisdictions, commonly called Gachacha, created in haste and empowered by the authorities, tried and condemned Dr. Emmanuel in absentia i.e. although he was not present. In spite of all this, he continued to demand that the initial appeal be allowed to proceed, but to no avail. Recently, a month before his death, a certain magazine in Kigali published a list of the names of Hutu intellectuals outside the country, accusing them of participating in genocide. Dr. Emmanuel was surprised to see his name on the list, and in addition to being charged with genocide, this time they added a charge of rape. With fury and anguish, Dr. Emmanuel wrote to the Minister of Justice in Kigali, justifying himself and asking of redress. He died without having received an answer. One might even wonder if this stress was not an aggravating factor. He has finished his race. Let him rest in peace. The Kigali-based Rwandan National Commission for the Fight Against Genocide, CNLG, is an important propaganda medium for the Kagame regime. It is this center that spreads propaganda, lies or half-truths against Rwandans in the diaspora. Recently, the chairman of that commission, as well as the president's first advisor, publicly declared that they will pursue all Hutu refugees around the world, persecute or kill them even if they were innocent. In the beginning, it was the Hutus who were targeted by this regime, but now Tutsis are also threatened. 
Anyone, Hutu, Tutsi, or even a foreigner, who dares to complain about the injustice or who dares to freely express their ideas about the regime is quickly eliminated or persecuted. See how the Rwandan media insult and harass 2018 Nobel Prize winner Dr. Denis Mukwege only because he dared to demand that the UN mapping report be made public. Many millions are spent each year by the Kigali regime funding some American and European lobbying organizations or individuals to propagate around the world through various mass media a positive image of President Kagame and his regime. This is how in the mass media Kagame is portrayed as a charismatic leader, a visionary and Rwanda as the African Singapore. Images that contrast sharply with the reality in the country. So I urge journalists not to simply copy and paste such propaganda about Rwanda but to scientifically verify the information first and if possible to do the extensive and documented research on this region of the Great Lakes because this region is the symbol of the tragic suffering of the entire African continent. There are journalists like the Franco-Cameroonian Charles Onana or the Canadian Judy Reeves who after serious scientific research have made public truths which angered the Rwandan authorities. This is why they suffered persecution from the Kigali regime in collaboration with its international lobbies. But this is the price to pay if we want the truth in this world. The truth will set us free.